Today we're going to be talking about The Visitors by Katherine Burns. I'll be employing a summary at the beginning and a more in-depth analysis towards the end of the video. Meet Marion Zetlin. Marion is a 54-year-old socially awkward woman without any friends. She likes walks to the grocery store, made-for-TV movies, the stuffed animals she sleeps with, and her imaginary friends. Marion lives with her older brother, John, in a ramshackle house in England. This is John, Marion's older brother. He's an intelligent man, a disgraced school teacher, and he spends all of his time in the basement making model airplanes. He likes tin food, bossing Marion around, and being left alone. John has a terrible secret, though. The visitors that he keeps in a cellar where he spends all of his time. One day, John has a heart attack requiring an extended stay in the hospital. This is the first time in her life that she's been left alone, and now it's up to Marion to call the shots. She can no longer ignore the visitors in the cellar. I'm now going to be going more in depth with the book, so consider this your spoiler alert. Let's start out by talking about what The Visitors is and what The Visitors isn't. This is an incredible debut from British author Catherine Burns, and I'm really looking forward to reading more from her. What The Visitors is not is a fast-paced detective mystery horror novel, but what The Visitors is is an atmospheric, almost claustrophobic at times, slow-paced character study. This book switches from past to present. We get to see the ways in which Marion was neglected by her family, how she grew up lonely and alone, how she was so afraid of not having love that she didn't have love, and these scenarios in which she took out vengeance for the neglect that she was feeling. You go through this book really feeling sorry for Marion because of the situation she's in being alone being lost her one trip a week to the grocery store is the highlight of her week she has this very overbearing emotionally abusive brother but then the layers start to unravel and you see where Marion has evil inside of her and she does pretty evil things and once that unravels you start to wonder about the idea of nurture and nature. And can evil be nurtured through neglect, through loneliness? I think that it can. I don't think that necessarily evil is something that you are born with. And I know that this is a theme that is in literature all the time. And just psychology, the nurture versus nature. But this book really turned it upside on its head and it gave me a very unique perspective on things. Now this is a dark read, don't get me wrong. You are literally reading a book about the woman who the woman who lives up the stairs from women who are being held against their will, who have been catfished to this fate. But what I thought was super interesting about this was that the perspective in which this book was told. You hear about the victims and you hear their stories and read their memoirs and you hear about the men that take these women and through their court cases what kind of person knows this is going on in their basement and they don't do anything about it that's the perspective you get with this book and it really made me think about things in a way I hadn't before and it, that actually kind of blew my mind a little bit I admit I felt a little bit manipulated after I finished this book but I think that you're supposed to Marion manipulates everyone by seeming like she is harmless when real evil resides inside. When we look at the character of John, we know that he's a bad guy. Marion's behavior around him demonstrates that. The way that he interacts with his neighbors and how he sees everyone outside of himself also demonstrates that. And then, of course, there's his hobby in the cellar. What I thought was very, very interesting about the story and what I thought that Catherine Burns did a fantastic job on was, con was contrasting the evil that we know with the evil that we don't know. 
Here we have Marion, who is mousy, alone, never been in love, doesn't have any friends, is agreeable to everyone, and she has evil lurking inside of her. And then we have John, who no one likes, who everyone is suspicious of, and people know to just keep away. And it makes me wonder, which evil is more frightening? The evil that you know, the monsters that you know, or the evil that is lurking deep inside of those that we think are safe. And I have to say, after reading this book, I think that that evil may perhaps be a much more dangerous evil. I'm going to end this review off with my favorite line from the book. You are the kind of evil that comes from nothing, from neglect and loneliness. You are like mold that grows in damp, dark places, black dirt gathered in corners, a fatal infection that begins with a speck of dirt in an unwashed wound. I think that this line, this one line, entirely summarizes this whole book. Thank you for joining me. I'm new at this, and I will learn as I go. So until next time, I hope you find something this week that brings you joy.